You've also worked with Giulio Tononi on Integrated Information Theory of Consciousness, IIT. Can you explain IIT for us? It's a formal theory of, there are few examples of that. There's certainly almost no examples of that in neuroscience. Uh, it's a formal theory in a, se in a sense it starts off with axioms. So it doesn't just say, well, I think the function of consciousness is planning and therefore prefrontal cortex is involved. That's sort of a typical uh, cognitive science, neuroscience story. And it may well be true to a certain extent. But this theory is very different. It starts out with consciousness. It says any conscious experience has certain properties, any experience, whether that's a dreaming experience or whether that's being in love or whether that's when you're having near-death experience. And uh, any possible experience of any creature has has sort of five properties. It's intrinsic, it's for itself. It's very specific, right? It is what it is, you know, whatever it is. When I see you, it's a specific type of experience, which is very different from seeing my son, who's roughly your age, right? Um, 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 it's definite, there are certain things that are in it, and the vast majority of experiences out there, and whatever's in it defines this particular experience. It's integrated, it's holistic, it's one experience, and it's structured. You know, when I look at you, there's left, there's right, there's up, there's down, there's neighborhood, there's distance relationship. And that's true for even when I when I smell something or, you know, when 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 I'm upset at something, the different aspect in that experience. And then um, it looks for a substrate that could mediate this experience by making this other fundamental step. It says what exists, this goes back to Plato, What exists is what can cause. Okay, so let's unpack that. So cause means I, I can be an agent of change. I can, I can cause because of my, let's say, let's say I'm a neuron or let's say I'm a transistor. My gate is open or my, my, my gate is shut, then current flows through or current doesn't, electrical current flows through my transistor gate or it doesn't, and that can affect something downstream. You know, that affects the next transistors. Or I'm a neuron. If the neuron is fires, it sends out an action potential, it can, it can cause other neurons to discharge neurotransmitter or to fire or not to fire. Right? So this is causal power. Gravity is causal power. Electric charge has, has, uh, has causal power. So only what exists, no, uh, uh, only what, ca uh, what ca has causal power, what can take a difference and make a difference. So in other words, you have to be affected by something in the world and you have to be able to, to affect the world in order to exist. This is actually a widely used principle in physics. And, and that we, you know, if, if we want, we can go into the example of the ether. Now, this is, ex this is so-called extrinsic power power, uh, extrinsic causal power, power for others. Consciousness exists to the extent it exerts causal power on itself. Because of the first axiom, conscious experience is intrinsic. It's for the person or for the thing that has the conscious experience. My conscious experience is intrinsic to me. You don't access it. I can talk about it, but ultimately it's my, it's this intrinsic conscious experience. So, The, the theory says, well, now you look for, and, and causal power you can mathematically calculate if you have what's called the transition probability matrix, TPM, of any system. So it's substrate neutral. It's totally agnostic. Could be transistors, could be solar, solar corona, could be brains, whatever. You have a mechanism where you have certain things in one state and some things in a different state. Could be binary, could be analog, could be deterministic, could be probabilistic. That doesn't affect the, 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 the fundamental concept. It just affects your transition probability matrix. And causal power means that, let's say, these three neurons that are on, you know, can influence those 17 neurons over there. And those two neurons over here can trigger something in this neuron over here. And you have to do that exhaustively for the entire system. This is its causal power. The ability of the system to be in a, the, the current state, it's always state dependent, by the way. So you have to take a brain like this to analyze what is currently, what is it experience. It's not generic, it's specific. To a, to a mechanism like the brain in a specific state, meaning these neurons here and here and here are firing and the rest of the neurons are off, you know, as an example. And then you analyze all possible relationships, causal relations among all possible, um, uh, all possible elements, in this case neuron, and you look for the one that maximizes the, the intrinsic causal power. And you can use a mathematical calculus It derives a number that some of you may have heard called phi, the Greek symbol phi. It's a pure number. 
bits, not bits, between zero and inf and uh, practically speaking infinite. I mean, very large. It's a it's a real thing, a, a real number. And um, you look for the substrate that has the maximum cause effect power. It has to be different from zero. If it's zero, the system doesn't exist as a whole. It doesn't exist as a system. So the other way to think about it, which makes it a little bit easier, is phi, is sort of irreducible complexity. If a system is reducible to something simpler, let's say if a system is reducible to two independent components, well, then it doesn't exist as a system. It only exists as a, a subsystem. And then you have to analyze each of these. Does this one have phi different from zero? Does the other one have phi different from zero? And the theory says whatever is conscious in this particular system, let's say this, is the, integra is the substrate that maximizes the integrated information, which doesn't include all neurons, because remember the, the theory says in, uh, uh, any experiment is integrated, so you have to have all neurons sort of connected to each other, not all to all, but they have to causally interact with each other. And so if something is too big, it's just like an empire here on, on planet Earth, you lose sort of causal control over the distant regions and they go off and do their own thing, like in any large empire that starts breaking up when the central hegemonic power loses its, its influence. So, the, 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 so that's what the physical substrate of consciousness is. And the way it feels like something, so, so how conscious the system is, is described by this number phi. So you can have some systems that are phi is two or other where the phi is two trillion. Um, the other thing you have to look at, as I mentioned, all the causal um, structure, you unfold the causal structure of the system by considering all possible subcomponents. These two neurons acting on those 17, those three acting on those five. And that's a very, very, very large number. It scales as two to the two to the n. So if you have a brain that has 10 neurons, that's two to the two to the 10, that's two to the thousand. That's vastly bigger than, you know, there are only uh, 10 to the 70 atoms in the universe. So it scales very, very quickly to vast numbers. And the theory says what you experience, the way space feels different from being in love, from smelling, you know, Limburger cheese, is ultimately the causal structure the, this intrinsic cause-effect structure of all the unfolded causal relationship of a mechanism in a state. It's a quite a radical claim because it says it's sort of it maps one to one. Everything in this causal, in this unfolded form, this, uncausal, uh, this unfolded structure, all the re uh, causal relationship of this particular system uh, in this particular state maps onto conscious experience and every aspect of conscious experience finds in its counterpart in this particular structure. It's a one-to-one -one mapping. It's not an identity relation. They map onto each other one-to-one. -one. So it says, ultimately, what consciousness is, it's a structure. It's a form. It's a, it's a causal structure. It's a form. It's not a computation. It's not a clever hack. It's not a process. It's not a brain pattern activity. So it's very different from for better or worse, than every other theory of consciousness. Functionalism would say if one is conscious and the other one does the same function as the one that's conscious, well, the other one will be conscious too. IT would say no, they're quite different. You have to look under the hood. You have to sort of look into the box, into the gray box, and look at the wiring. What do you view are the implications, if anything, of IIT for the abortion debate? Well, A... Subscribe to I'm Curious for more clips and watch the full interview on Patreon. Thanks for watching.